What's up everybody, this is Reverend Patterson here and I just wanted to take a moment and invite you to our Be Well Week. This upcoming week, we will focus on our church's theme, which is Be Well, worship, evangelize, learn, and love. On this coming week, starting on Monday, that is our worship night. And our friend from Ebenezer and Steel Creek will be our special guest. Pastor Walter Bowers and his congregation will lead us in a powerful 60 minute worship and word on Facebook and YouTube at 7 p.m. Take 60 minutes out of your time on this coming Monday to worship God with us. You don't want to miss it. On Tuesday, Tuesday is our evangelism night. It is the evangelism day that we will have a part of our Be Well Week. Pastor has created a short video and what we want you to do is share that video with as many people who don't know Christ as possible and those that are needing some hope. Please do whatever you got to do. Put it on social media. Put it in your group chats. Allow somebody to have this video a part of their life. This is the day that we evangelize. So that means to go out and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. On Wednesday, New Zion members, you should have gotten email communication. We have divided the church up into small groups and we want to invite you to take part in those small groups. Invite somebody in. You should get the information, the Zoom information. We want to study the full court press. I promise you it's going to be very good. You don't want to miss this particular night. Thursday is our love day, our love day. This is the day where we show and showcase the love of Jesus Christ. Pastor has asked that all members, that all members will show the love to somebody outside of our new Zion family. Bless them. If you know an organization that is in need, a family that is in need, give them and show them the love of Jesus Christ. I want to stretch somebody right here that you would just bless them in such a way that makes you uncomfortable. This is our love day. We want to show the love of Jesus Christ. And finally, this coming Saturday, Saturday, August the 8th, we will culminate our Be Well Week with an outdoor concert right here on our beautiful church campus. This event is free and open to the public, and we want to invite you to come and share with us. We have some dynamic groups and artists and soloists that will come and bless our socks off. You don't want to miss it. However, please be patient with us on this day. Follow the direction of the parking attendants because we want to make sure that this remains a safe environment for all of those in attendance. Please remember to stay in your vehicles and note that the church will not be accessible during the entirety of the concert. Bring your praise because we will sing and lift up the name of Jesus. We hope that you will plug in with us every day and in every way throughout our Be Well Week. Worship, evangelize, learn, and love. On behalf of our pastor and first lady Tamika Johnson, all that means is be well. I gotta go. Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and I want to read two verses that I want to read today is 2 Corinthians 4 verse 8 and 9 it says we are troubled on every side yet not distressed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken cast down but not destroyed 
I don't know about you, but that is good news today. Even though I may be going through some things, I know that God is still on my side. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, we thank you for being just a loving, merciful God just to us, even in spite of us. Lord, we ask you that you would just have your way today in this service. We pray now, God, that any distraction, any deterrent, any demon, any devil would just leave in the mighty name of Jesus. Matter of fact, we cast him back to the pits of hell from where he has come because he has no power, he has no authority in our life. And we ask you now, Lord, that you would just have your way on today. We ask you to bless the psalmist, bless the word, bless everyone here today, even those that are watching us virtually. God, send them a visitation wherever they may be because we know that there's no distance in the spirit. And since we know that, God, we are serving you with free course, spirit of the living God, have your way on today. And we will be found yet again, giving you the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in the name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen and amen. Do me a favor. Get up out of your bed. Get up out of your seat. And give God praise with us as we worship God on another Sunday morning. Come on, keep that going. Come on, keep that going. Come on, keep that going. Come on, people of God. Bless the name of Jesus. Yes, God, the enemy is defeated. Thank God you are exalted. I'm chasing after you, Jesus. Come on, put those hands together.
Come on and bless him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, glory, 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 glory. I'm chasing after you. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm chasing after you. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, with tears falling down my face. I'm chasing after you, my Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ this morning. Do me a favor if you don't mind, reach down in the chat box. Our virtual greeters want to know that you're here. Let us know who you are and where you're tuning in from. You guys, in just a few moments, I'm going to give you I'm going to give you some time to virtually meet and greet somebody. If we were here, we would do it here in the church, but you guys, it is so important that we continue to reach out and to connect to one another. And so whoever the Lord is putting on your heart this morning, maybe it's somebody in your house, maybe it's somebody that you need to send a text to, maybe it's somebody right there in the chat room that you used to sit right next to here in the sanctuary. Also, I want to give you a chance to give during this time. Right across the screen, you'll see four different ways that you can give. As you can see, ministry is still happening right here in New Zion. And because of your love, because of your faithfulness, and because of your gifts, we are able to still do ministry in here, out there, and we're able to do ministry through other ministries as well. So I would ask that you would just continue to give, and I pray that God will continue to do great and mighty 
mighty things through you, through your life, through your health, through your finances. Also, you guys, at the end of service, if you could do me a favor and just stick around for three more minutes to check out what's happening right here in New Zion. All right, so get your phones out or get ready to um, type in the chat, and we'll see you back here in just a few moments. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank God just for another opportunity just to be able to worship him. Were you blessed already? I hope that you were. The praise team is on fire. We give God praise and glory. Listen, I am here to introduce our speaker for this morning. None other than one of pastor's closest friends, the pastor of Michael McNair. Amen. McNair is a servant of the Lord Jesus. He has been in ministry for many, many, many years. I just want to highlight a couple of things about this man of God. In 2007, he and his lady wife, Miss Leah, uh, divinely answered the call of pastorship to the Emmanuel Baptist Church in the big city of Thompsonville, North Carolina. In 2012, Pastor McNair, he founded the Mac Publishing, a Christian-based, family-owned, mainline publishing organization. In spite of all of that, besides all of the many accolades that this brother has, we are excited to have him a part of our pastor's friendship, but not only that, but of New Zion. He's been an evangelist throughout this city for many years, and we are glad to have him this morning. New Zion, we are blessed to be a part of, be able to have Pastor yes. McNair. He is going to preach us like nobody else. We thank God for him. Right after the praise team blesses us with another selection, the next speaker speaking voice that you will hear will be none other than Pastor McNair and I would that you would receive him just like you would anybody else and give God glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. All the glory belongs to you oh God. All the glory belong to you. All the glory belong to you, oh God. Come on, let's sing it right here. All the glory, all the glory belongs to you. Hey, all the glory belongs to you, oh God. Thank you, Lord. All the glory belongs to you. Sing that again. All the glory belongs. All the glory belongs to you. Yeah. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Yes. Come on, sing it with us. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you. Yes, it does. Yeah, 
hallelujah there we are come on the song said all the glory belongs to him so why don't you act like he deserved that glory open up your mouth yes. and just begin to give him from the fruit of your glory lips but he's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same the name of the Lord shall forever be worthy the name of the Lord shall forever be lifted up oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together for the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised worthy to be glorified so we lift him up we bless his name glory to your name God we bless you we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise. Oh God, if we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So Father, today, even in the midst of our situation, we still lift our hands. God, we still open our mouth. We still give you glory. We still give you honor. We still give you praise. God, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. So we thank you today and we give your name glory, honor, and praise hallelujah listen guys i'm glad to be here i'm glad to be in this building i'm glad to be coming in your home your jobs your car um whatever you are wherever you are viewing this it is of the lord's mercies that we have not been consumed his compassions have failed us not his mercies are new every morning great is thy faithfulness Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad God been faithful to me. Even when I wasn't faithful to him, he was faithful to me. Because of that, we got to tell God, thank you. It's in moments like this where we have an opportunity to still connect the best way that we can. And we thank God for allowing us to do so. Um, even in times like this, Again, I'm honored to be here uh, with New Zion, and I give honor to your pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right there in your home, just clap it up for him and keep those hands going for his lovely wife. Amen. First lady. Amen. Good friends of ours, my, myself and my wife, and um, probably going on 15 years, um, we've been... Um, extremely close. Your pastor and I are extremely close. Amen. I told uh, um, the assistant pastor in the back, we, we, we go close. We close like we got secrets close. Amen. So that's some stuff we go into the grave with. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to have good friends like that. Amen. They won't tell all your business. Come on, somebody. <laughs> um, so I thank God for him. And then, of course, the leadership here at New Zion, all the leaders, um, members. Um, thank you guys for the opportunity um, for me to stand before you um, and speak this Sunday morning. You know, I'm always grateful for the opportunity, always appreciative whenever I have an opportunity to share the word of the Lord because you had options. Amen. You could have chose someone else. Um, so I'm thankful um, for the opportunity to be here. Thankful for a progressive church hallelujah amen that we can recognize that God is not just in the temple but he's also in technology amen so we thank God for all of the essential church workers that come out here every week and put time in so that we can come to you in the quality hallelujah that God has afforded us and um, as the young lady said earlier, if, if you are blessed by this, then uh, so into it. Uh, I mean, if you if this is something that is blessing your life, then you should honor the Lord by uh, allowing us to continue to do this at the level um, that you are doing it at. So if your church is doing this um, at a great level and you appreciate them, give us give us some hearts. You know, hearts is the new amen. It's the new hallelujah. Amen. So uh, we thank God for the production team and the praise team and musicians everyone that have put the time in here to make this a awesome experience where we can still have some connection to the parishioners um, here at New Zion the members um, and the engagement so we thank God for that 
uh, I want to talk just for a few moments this morning. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel chapter number 1. Amen. And, um, and I won't be before you long. I don't think. I don't think I'm a long preacher. No preacher thinks they long. I don't think I am. But I recognize that people are extremely busy online. A lot of multitasking going on. So I know I'm not your pastor. Um, and if you just give me about 10 minutes before you log off, amen, just let's just, just indulge me and give me about 10 minutes to get your attention. Um, and I promise you, uh, I believe the Lord will bless you. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10, I'm going to read out in the New Living Translation. It says, Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut amen for the purpose of this preaching moment i want us to underscore a uh, verse number 11 and she made this vow hallelujah father we thank you we bless you for this opportunity for us to hear your word receive your word but more importantly father be doers of your word we say thank you God, we thank you for the opportunity to come to people no matter where they are so, Father, while you're here anointing me, this same spirit, God, that you put on me, allow it to rest in their homes, their cars, their jobs. God, arrest their attention that they can uh, receive what you would have them to hear. God, I thank you for the grace that comes with this gift that I may boldly proclaim your word. Father, in my flesh and blood, I have nothing to say. So use me for your glory. Have your way in this place like never before that somebody's life will be changed. God, I pray that you get all the glory, all the honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And she made this vow. I want to talk from the subject entitled, Let's Make a Deal. Hallelujah. Let's make a deal. John Adams in his letter to Thomas Jefferson, he said, and I quote, my friend, you and I have lived in serious times. This is, in fact, a statement and a quote he made in the 17th and 18th centuries. Today, August 2nd, 2020, my brothers and sisters, we are still experiencing, functioning, and living in serious times. And serious times is times for praying times. Hallelujah. When I was growing up, the old saints used to say these are praying times. And we thought then that what was happening in the world was so tragic that it was in fact praying times but as we are here today and we are gathering virtually and digitally I believe all of us can attest that not only was it serious times then but it's still serious times and since it's still serious times it is even more important that these times be praying times and it's interesting because when you approach different seasons in your life Prayer means different things. You know, when you was in your teens, prayer meant something different. When you became in your 20s, prayer meant something different. When you get in your 30s and 40s, which I'm, 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 this, is, this is my neck of the woods, prayer means something different as you begin to evolve in life because everything in our lives is being affected now so it's important that we 
pray and unfortunately everything is growing except for our prayer life. Everything is growing except for our prayer life. People are doing well. People are doing good even in the midst of a pandemic. And in all of this, we have forgotten to take time to talk to God. And it's important because when we look at what the scope of our world is, not only uh, in this text in particular do we see this woman pray, but we see her make, in fact, a vow. A vow is a promise to offer something to God that if God would intervene on the behalf of the individual, when we make a vow, in essence, we put a offer on the table. Hallelujah. When you make a vow, you, in essence, put a offer on the table. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5 and 4, the New International Standard Bible says, when you make a vow to God, don't be late in paying it. For, if, for he takes no delight in fools. Pay what you owe. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Verse 5 says, it is better that you should not vow than you should vow and not Hey, let me say that again for those of y'all who had it mute, unmuted. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. So let me make this make real good sense. God, in essence, is saying, I'm not your phone bill. Don't miss me. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a lease payment either. You don't just get to turn me back in. When you through dealing with me, when you, when you don't want to drive this automobile anymore, you don't just get to walk out of this agreement. No, when you give me your word, I need you to stick with it. And maybe y'all ain't like me, but I'm one of the ones when you tell me you're going to do something. Come on, somebody. When you tell me you're going to do you need to stick to your word. And I'm led to believe that some of the hell we catching isn't the devil. Some of the hell we catching it isn't the devil. This is our penalty for breaking our contract. This is our penalty for saying, God, I'm going to do what you told me to do. And when it was time to put up, you reneged on the contract. That's why when two people get married, there's a part of the ceremony where the man and the woman exchange vows because they have to make an agreement. You have to say, do you? Yes, I do. I honor you. I love you. To death do us. Okay, I got some married folk in here. To death do us part. We want to say that. To death do us part. That is the vow. You make a commitment, a honor. You sign a contract with that person. And in times like this, we need to be willing to put something on the table if you want God to do something you've got to be willing to make the proper investment and in this text we see a woman by the name of Hannah Hannah wanted children Hannah wanted to be a mother's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with wanting to conceive and bear children and the Bible begins to give us this wonderful story of how this woman made this transition in her prayer life where she went from praying to God to actually making a prayer vow to God so preacher what is it that happens when you make a vow. The first thing that happens, my brothers and sisters, when we make a vow, making a vow removes my options. Hallelujah. Making a vow removes my options. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 1 and 3, the NIV version, year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. The Bible says that they would make this yearly trip to Shiloh to offer their yearly sacrifice. This is where the Ark of the Covenant was. And Elkanah had two wives because one of them couldn't have a, a baby. Now, if you understand the context, the pride of a man in the Bible days was his sons. 
Even now, if you got sons, you proud to have sons. I got twin boys. I'm proud to stick my chest out. One looked like me, one looked like his mama. I'm proud to have two boys because that's the pride of a man. The more sons you had in the Bible days, the bigger the boss you was. You know, you could flex a little bit if you had a lot of sons. This was the mark of your manhood. So here we have this man who has two wives. Don't miss this. One of his wives is popping out kids, all right? And the other one is not able to have kids. But the one who is not giving kids, the Bible says that he loved her. Hallelujah. So he didn't get another wife because he wanted kids. He got another wife because he didn't trust God. All right? He didn't trust God. He's worshiping a God. Hallelujah. He doesn't fully trust. And this is what we have in 2020. You know, we don't mind singing about him. But do you really know how to wait on him? Hallelujah. I know we sing the songs. God is able to do just what he said he would do. We've mastered worshiping a God that we don't really trust. Bible says that year after year they went to offer sacrifices to God. He's offering sacrifice to a God he does not trust. Hallelujah. So it, it removes our options. The second thing is, I'm making good time, hallelujah. It puts my character and integrity on the line. All right? It puts my character and my integrity on on the line, preacher, you got to show me that. Well, here it is in verse 4 and 6. It says, whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, here it is, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, here it is, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. All right, New Zion, she got his heart, but she can't produce. She got his heart, but she, she can't produce anything for him. And this is what I love about God. This is what I love about God. This is why my love for him runs so deep, New Zion, that even in the midst of me looking over this word and preparing this word that I could hardly contain myself because it's in moments like this where we see God's care, his connection, and his concern to us that even in our seasons where we are not producing nothing for him, that he will still love us in spite of hallelujah i wish i just had a handful of y'all that say preacher i know what you're talking about because i ain't always been lovable but even in the midst of my stuff god has still loved me that's why we should be praising god because we may not have nothing but i thank god that i got his heart so elkanah says i gotta feed y'all they go up there and the bible says that he give portions of his earnings he give portions to his other wife but to hannah he gives a double portion don't miss this Penina, he gives a portion but the bible says to hannah he gives a double portion so he goes y'all gotta excuse me i'm still young so when i look at scripture um i i look at it like a movie so i can only imagine elkanah is up there and he's upset and he goes over to Penina kids, and he's like, all right, Junior, here's yours. You get one. All right, Tim Tim, you get one. Um, all right, Junebug, you get, you know, everybody got Junebug. Hey, all right, all right, all right. And, and, and here you go, Penina. Y'all get one. And he goes over to Hannah, and he says, here. Take, take, take all, take all I got. He, he goes over to Penina, one, 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 but he goes over to Hannah, the Bible says, and he gives her a double portion. She's not eating for three. It's just her. And we got to look at this, and we got to be careful because there's a difference between
between being weak and wicked. The Bible says that Penina then started counting. And she got an attitude. She got a problem. Now she upset. So Penina got to do something. Now I know y'all don't got this problem, but I grew up with a lot of women. Hallelujah. Uh, mother, aunts. I was raised in the church by some old school mothers. If you grew up old school Baptist, you know some church mothers. And as, as, as much as they are Holy Ghost filled, sanctified, they can be some uh, women that can uh, do some things and say some things. If you get on their nerves, and this is what Hannah is epitomizing, an old school Baptist church mother. Hannah upset, Hannah gets on the phone. Hannah start calling folk that you know Hannah can't produce, right? You know Hannah can't make no kids, right? I don't know why he love her, but you know she can't make no kids. I got something for her, though. I'm going to show up Sunday, and I'm going to sit behind her with all my kids. <laughs> I'm going to sit behind her with all my kids. They're going to cry. They're going to make noise. And we're just going to irritate her. And the Bible says that she provoked her. She provoked her. Antagonized her. Provoked her. And I had to think about this because it reminded me when my wife and I was trying to have kids. It took us 10 years. We was trying to have kids. We, we prayed and prayed. And, you know, when you're going through stuff, the enemy will use people, hallelujah, to say stuff to irritate you that they don't even know they're doing. There was things that would happen that would just irritate us. And this is what the enemy was doing uh, to Hannah through Penina. He was antagonizing her. And here it is. Here's the challenge. Hannah is like, Penina, you got all the stuff, and I ain't got nothing. But you still don't like me. I had to look at this, and the Lord said, look real close. I said, what is it, Lord? He said, Penina got the stuff. But Hannah got the favor. Hallelujah. And I know y'all looking at this, you're like, no, preacher, you, you know, you're not biblically correct. And you got to talk to Pastor Barron to say you got to get somebody up in here that could be more biblical sound. But hold on before you write me off. Look at the text. This is why I say she has favor. Because the Bible says that the Lord closed her womb. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says that the Lord closed her womb. See, if it was cervical cancer, we could pray for that. You know, if it was something simply something that you link up and you pray for. If it if it was an infection or or fibroids, we we could we could pray about that. The problem wasn't her body. The problem was God. He closed it. And this is why Elkanah should have trusted God because if he closes it, hallelujah. He's also the one that can open it. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is why you got to trust God in some seasons in your life. Uh, because sometimes that closed door wasn't the devil. It was simply God's uh, divine hand. She's not barren because she's sick. She's barren because she's selected. Hallelujah. The Lord selected her and closed her wound and it's possible and even in fact could it be that God needed some type of collateral some type of deal some type of offer to purchase he he needs you to put something up if you want it that bad because without a vow the world will get him, and this one is too valuable for me to let you get it so easily. I wish I had some parents that know that the enemy been attacking your child, and you've been praying, uh, you've been fasting, but thanks be unto God uh, that you're not going to let the enemy get them. You're not going to let the world get them. I know they sitting at home, and they need something to do, but the devil is a liar. Pray over them. I used to wake up in the morning, and I had grease all over my forehead because my grandma didn't oil me up all night. No. Penina being evil and she's being vindictive and Hannah getting up every morning. Lord, I thank you. 
Lord, I just thank you. God, I bless you. God, there's nothing like you. God, I know I don't have what I want, but God, you're so good. God, you're so great. God, I know we're in a pandemic, but God, I still give you glory. God, I still give you honor. I still give you praise. God, I know you ain't giving me everything I've asked for, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. It is of the Lord's mercies that we have not been concerned soon his compassions have filled us not his mercies i knew every morning great is thy faithfulness what then do we say to these things if god before us who can be against us every morning she's getting up while the enemy is provoking her she's still giving god praise it's not gonna change my spiritual character and my integrity. I wish I had some help in here. It's not going to change my character. Don't let nobody cause you to break your character. You ain't that important. You ain't that anointed. I know the devil using you, but I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think. So when I make a vow, I can't let it change my character and my integrity. And lastly, New Zion, and I'm out of here. I hope I'm not boring y'all. But making a vow will change your perspective. It will change your perspective. Preacher, you got to prove that again. I can do it. I done done it three times. So it's not three strikes. That's three home runs. Hallelujah. First Samuel verse 10 and 11, NIV says, In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. Here it is. Verse 11, And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me. Hallelujah. Some of you, that's all you needed to hear right there. You just need to change a couple of words in your prayer. Say, Lord, remember me. While you healing folk, remember me. While you opening up doors for everybody, remember me. While you blessing their house and their children, remember me. And not forget your servant, but give her a son. Then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. New Zion, it's not that she wasn't praying. She hadn't put nothing on it. Hallelujah. She made a vow. This is what Paul says in 3. Philippians 3 and 3, New Living Translation, Paul said that we put no confidence in human effort. Hannah realized, I can't do it. And watch this, nobody else can. But why? Why should I not put confidence in human effort, preacher? Because Paul goes on to say in verse 10 and 11, that I may know him. Hallelujah. And this is what Hannah does. The Bible says she goes in the temple and she begins to pray. She began to talk to the Lord, and Eli thinks she drunk. He come to her and say, woman, you lost your mind. You crazy. She looks at him, and she said, no, servant, I just want the Lord to remember me. And while I'm praying, I hope that you pray for me. Think well of me is what she said. And the Bible says she went her way. She ate, and her face was radiant. And here it is, verse 19, the message Bible says, up before dawn. They worship God and return home. Elkanah, hallelujah, slept with his wife, Hannah. And God, don't miss this, don't miss this. God began making the necessary arrangements. Hallelujah. Y'all got to excuse me. I'm getting high off my own supply up here. God began to make the necessary arrangements in response to what she had ass. Now watch this. This isn't her first time with him. Right? Right? Because she had been trying to have kids. This isn't her first time being intimate with her husband. This is her first time since she made a vow. Hallelujah. This is her first time since she had petitioned God. And the Bible says that he made 
the necessary arrangements. Look at what happens in my prayer time when I put God first and put an offer on the table. I say, God, if you do this, I'll do this. He begins to make the necessary arrangements. The Bible says that he did this in response to what she had asked. Hallelujah. My message today, guys, is what are you believing God for? What are you praying for? What are you asking God for? And maybe, maybe God's just waiting on you to make a deal. Put something on the table. It's easy to ask him for something when you don't have to give nothing. It's easy to not appreciate it when you don't have to take care of it. You know, growing up, I used to, I used to wonder why whenever I got in my daddy's car, he wouldn't let me eat in the car. He wouldn't let me drink in the car. My dad had an old 1970 Mustang, and he had, he had tricked it out. He loved that car. But when I got in his old Chevy pickup truck, he let me play in the back, eat in the back, drop chips on the back. But when I got in that Mustang, no, nah, son, you can't, you can't bring that food in this Mustang. And he told me one day, he said, son, I put too much money in this. He said, and you'll never appreciate it the way I do. Because you ain't put in in it what I put in on it. And we got to be careful that we're not asking God for something that we're not willing to give ourselves. This is one of the challenges with this season that we're in as it relates to ministry and church. That the enemy is using this opportunity for some of us to disconnect us. And we expect to get in 30 minutes what you wouldn't spend 20 minutes doing yourself. But I got to get time with God. And maybe I need to lay before the Lord and put an offer on the table. God, if you do this this time, God, I promise you, I'll serve you like I've never served you before. God, I'll worship you like I've never worshiped you before. God, I'll honor you. Like I've never honored you before. God, you won't ever have to ask me, God, to give again, to love again. God, you won't ever have to ask me to forgive those who wrongfully done me. God, you won't ever have to ask me that. The Bible says in verse 20 that before the year was out, here it is. Here's where you honor God. Hannah had conceived and given birth to a son. Before the year was out, she conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, explaining, I asked God for him. My prayer of the day is for his presence, even in the midst of a pandemic, to still reign. My prayer is for his power. Hallelujah. Even in the midst of a pandemic. To still come forth. I don't know about you, but God, I need your presence. But God, I need your power. Because your word told me that your strength is made perfect in my weakness. God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. And lastly, my prayer over this house for protection God you kept us this far God we're living in stuff that other people are dying from God you're keeping us so God I dare not just take from you and not offer you something so just as Hannah did while you're right there in your homes, right here in this sanctuary, wherever you are, I just ask that you just lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord. The Bible says in spirit and in truth, the time will come and has come where the true worshipers must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And the Bible says that this 
is who the Lord is looking for. Somebody that's not confined to a building, but wherever you are, however you feel, you can still begin to tell the Lord just as Hannah did, Lord, I love you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I bless you. God, you're worthy. God, I give you, give you my life. God, I put a, a vow, I make a deal with you today, Lord. Whatever that is in your heart, you know what God is asking you to give up. You know what he's asking you to release. So, Father, today I pray for this house. I pray for New Zion. God, I pray for every listener, every hearer. But, Father, more importantly, for every doer, that we don't just be hearers of your word, but that we be doers as well. God, we thank you for this word this morning. God, I pray that someone who has begun to question you and even in the midst of this word, God, they begin to realize that they've been praying, but just as Hannah, they hadn't made a vow. They hadn't put an offer on the table. So, Father, it was their duty to hear this word today. So, Father, as they're praying to you, as they're seeking you, God, I pray that just as you did, Hannah, you begin to make the necessary arrangements. Hallelujah. Somebody is praying today for something they need you to do tomorrow. God, begin to make the necessary arrangements. Father, somebody is praying today for a decision they need to make in 30 days. Lord, begin to do the necessary arrangements. God, somebody is giving you glory today for healing that they need. Lord, begin to do the necessary arrangements in response to their prayer. God, give them your presence. Give them your power and give them your protection. God, I pray a special prayer for the under shepherd of this house. God, anoint him afresh from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. God, bless his going and his coming. God, continue to give him insight, eyesight, revelation, knowledge. God, continue to speak to him. God, give him vision, direction. God, like never before, God, we don't know what we're doing as leaders. We've never pastored in a pandemic. So, Father, lead us, guide us, instruct us. God, keep our ear to you, Father, that we can know the ways and the things. God, that we can lead your kingdom in the way that you would have us to go. God, I thank you for every leader that undergirds him. God, I thank you for every essential worker. God, begin to bless everyone that takes time week after week. God, to sacrifice themselves. God, even while we're here, this is our vow to you. Lord, begin to make the necessary arrangements. And Father, we'll be so careful to give your name the glory, to give your name the honor, and to give your name the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, New Zion. God bless you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, say that with us. Don't go nowhere. You may. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You make all things new. And I will follow you, follow you, follow you, follow you forward. One more time, one more time. You, you make all things new. Lord, you make all things new. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
New Zion, was you blessed by that word today? Let's make a deal right quick. Let's make a deal right quick. I want to invite you this morning that maybe there's somebody here that heard the man of God preach the word. And I want to make a deal with you. The word that you heard today was resonated, resonated with your spirit. If that's you, it's a number flashing across the screen right now. We invite you to call that number for prayer. If you don't know Jesus, if you want to meet this Jesus, I'll make a deal with you. Call that number right now. We have ministers on the other end waiting for you. Maybe you have strayed away from God. But you heard the man of God preach today and I want to make a deal. Call that number. Call that number. Don't put off today for tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Also, maybe you've been dating New Zion. You've been watching us all week throughout the pandemic. But I want to invite you to marry us today. Join this branch of Zion. Call that number. Call that number right now. We would love to have you as a member of New Zion. Pastor Barrington, First Lady Tamika Barrett Johnson would love to have you. New Zion would love to have you. Don't put it off. Call that number. Listen, I want you to do something. Before you log off, I need you to stay tuned with us for about another two to three minutes for these announcements that we're about to show. We got some great things coming up next week. And we need you to be in the know. We got a full week next week of our Be Well Week. I'm so excited. Listen to these announcements as they get ready to come. Back to school clothing and supply drive. The New Zion Youth Ministry is hosting a clothing and school supply drive for the upcoming 2020-2021 school year. While we are unsure if our students will return in person or virtually, we want them to be prepared. Please drop off school supplies along with new or gently used clothing to New Zion Missionary Baptist Church, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. beginning 7-15-2020. Greetings, the Health and Wellness Ministry is pleased to announce that fitness classes will resume beginning August 7th, 2020. As we strive to be well, please join us on Mondays and Fridays from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. for 12 weeks of total body conditioning. Classes will take place virtually using the Zoom platform so you can join us from the comfort of your home. Certified fitness professional Larry Block will lead our class sessions. These are your announcements for this week. Stay safe, wear your mask, be well. Amen. So listen, New Zion. This week coming up is going to be probably one of the most exciting weeks uh, that we've had within the last year, year and a half or so here at New Zion. This is our Be Well Week or our We Are Well Week that is starting tomorrow. So listen, here's what this means. Starting on Monday, tomorrow, August the 3rd, right at 7 o'clock, we need you to tune in right here to our social media platforms on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you are connecting with us right now, connect with us here tomorrow at 7 o'clock. We're having a guest church come in that is going to worship with us. This is like our revival night, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Pastor Walter Bowers from Ebenezer Baptist Church in Steel Creek will be here ministering to us with him and his praise team. All we're doing is word and worship, worship and word, that's all. Hang out with us for about 60 minutes tomorrow, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Now, on Tuesday, Tuesday is our night of evangelism. So we're following the well every week. Monday's our worship night. Tuesday is our evangelistic night. We are evangelizing. You will have a video that will be made available to you to share out via text, social media, whatever outlets that you have, even email, that you can send it out to somebody with the prayer that someone will hear it, see it, and that they'll surrender their heart unto the Lord. Now, on Wednesday, Wednesday is our learning night. 
we will separate into small groups. You'll get an email communication if you haven't already, which is describing what small group you can get plugged into as we learn together. Minister Kevin Henderson, which is our Minister of Discipleship, he's put together a wonderful night to where on that night as small groups will study the full court press. You will enjoy it. Then now to, to wrap up the well piece of it, on Thursday that will be our day of love. I'm asking everybody to make sure you take an opportunity to show someone that you love them with the love of Christ. Now, I'm asking not that you love somebody within our church, expand the reach and witness or ministers to somebody, demonstrate the love of Christ to them in whatever need or whatever way that you can do it. So here's the thing, I wanna challenge somebody to stretch Stretch on that Thursday, stretch on this coming Thursday, whether it is a financial blessing that you didn't think you could do or a sacrificial blessing in whatever way that you can make it happen, make it happen. Now, finally, to wrap up our We Are Well week on this Saturday coming up here on our church grounds, we are having an outdoor concert. You don't want to miss this because we have a lot of groups coming in, praise team, psalmist, that for about 60 to 90 minutes, we are going to have a great time in our church parking lot. We want you here. Now, you'll get some email communication about this. Everyone will stay in their cars. We'll allow you to roll your windows down, but we will have a great time. All right, listen, we love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and able to you faultless in the presence of his glory, and with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Father, we love you. We thank you. We give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow night. So